This video shall explain the various aspects of neurogenic bladder. So, let's first talk about bladder innervation. The bladder receives different innervation modalities. First, it receives sympathetics from the thoracolumbar segments, starting from the T11 to L2 via the hypogastric nerve. This sympathetic innervation acts to hold on urine by relaxing the bladder. It acts on the adrenergic beta-3 receptors and secretes noradrenaline. Second, it receives parasympathetics from the sacral segments from S2 to the S4 via the pelvic nerve, which is responsible for emptying the bladder by contraction of the detrosal muscles. It acts on the muscarinic M3 receptors and secretes acetylcholine. Third, somatic from the sacral segments also at the S2 to the S4 via the pudendal nerve. During maturation, this nerve is inhibited, causing relaxation of the external urethra sphincter. It acts on the nicotinic receptors and secretes also the acetylcholine. Now let's talk about the micturition reflex. When urine accumulates inside the bladder, it will stimulate the stretch receptors on the wall of the trouser muscles. This will sense afferent sensory stimulations via the parasympathetic nerves to the sacral segments, which in turn activate the parasympathetic innervation that contract the bladder. This will cause emptying of the bladder. If this goes uninhibited, you will empty your bladder every 15 to 20 minutes or so. But this reflex is under the inhibitory effect of the pontine micturition center, which in turn under the influence of the prefrontal cortex, insula, and cingulate gyrus. If the time or place is not suitable for urination, it will inhibit the pontine micturition center which in turn inhibit the micturition reflex. Once it's suitable, this inhibition is released, allowing the parasympathetic sacral segments to contract the bladder and relax the internal sphincter. Also, the cortex act to relax the external voluntary urethral sphincter by inhibiting the pudendal nerve. Now let's talk about types of neurogenic bladder. As the bladder can be affected by a lesion along the neural axis. A suprapontine lesion, like occurs in stroke or Alzheimer disease, for example, characterized by loss of cortical inhibition on the pontine micturition center. This will lead to loss of inhibition on the micturition reflex itself. So the bladder will contract so frequently and with time it will become hyperactive. However, the external urethral sphincter will remain normal. The patient usually have storage problems like frequency, urgency and urge incontinence. With the spinal cord lesions like in the transverse myelitis or a traumatic spinal cord injury, this is characterized by loss of inhibition of the pontine micturition center over the parasympathetic innervation of the bladder with no inhibition over the pudendal nerve. This ultimately can lead to overactive bladder with overactive external urethral sphincter. This can lead to what is called detrosal sphincter dyssynergia and the patient usually has both storage and emptying problems and the pressure inside the bladder will rise eventually causing hydroureter and hydronephrosis. With a lesion that affect the sacral or infrasacral, like in pelvic surgery, the patient usually have an underactive bladder with underactive sphincters. So the patient usually has an emptying problems due to atonic bladder and usually an overflow incontinence. 